and we're back to exorcism still javascript this should be the 19th exercise in my playlist and it's this one alice's transformative enchantment it's about every transformations as always read through the instructions yourself i'm going to go over this as i solve the tasks it's once again about a couple of methods that are inbuilt you can read over this right here it's linked Let me show you the ones that we need as we solve this exercise. The first one, we want to double every single card in our deck array. If I scroll up, we can find the first method. I believe it was the first one right here, the map. And in the example, it uses the given array. And it's going to reduce every single value by minus one. So 1 becomes 0, 2 becomes 1, 3 becomes 2, and so forth. We can use the same way of doing this for our task 1. So I'll define a new array. Const double deck. It's equal to our given deck, which is the array in this case. And now we use the map. And afterwards, we obviously want to return our new double deck array. And for the map, we can copy paste this one. But we don't want to reduce it by one. Instead, we want to take every value and double it. So we just need times two right here. And then it should work. Let me look at maybe here yeah, test two. So every value that's given in the deck array is doubled. It's placed in our new array double deck and is then returned. Let's head over to task two. And this one's a little bit more complex. We've got once again the deck array and every time we find a three, we want to add two more threes to it so that we have three in total. Let us go over this step by step. At first, I'll create a new array. Let me call it 3 deck. So this is where we want to put the new stuff in. So this, this new order of cards that have that has the triple threes. And now I use a four of loop. Let me create a new variable here card. And once again, deck is our array. And if our card, so the new variable that I've created, is strictly equal to 3. We want to add 3 threes to our new deck. So 3 deck. And we can use a method that we've used in an early exercise. It's called push. We want to push 3, 3, 3. So every time we have in our deck a value of 3, this is now pushed into the new array and if the card in the deck is not a 3, we simply want to push the card. And afterwards we obviously need to return our new array, which is the 3 deck. And then we should be fine with task 2. In test 7 you can see it, so the first card would be a 3, therefore the if condition is true and our new deck, the 3 deck, gets 3 threes. Then 10, the if condition is false, therefore we use else and a card is pushed, so the 10 is added to our new 3 deck array and so forth. Let's go to task 3. We want to find two cards from the exact middle of the deck. In the example on the right hand side, this is 5 and 6. Let me directly create a new array. So const middle deck. And I want to use the deck that we have and splice it. Splice 
splice is explained right here. So in this example, the first one, the array is spliced with the values 2, which is the index position 2, so 0, 1, 2, which is the value 5. It doesn't splice anything, but it's going to add the value 3 to it. So at this exact position before the 5, the 3 is added to a new array. Here in the second example, we go to index position 3, so 0, 1, 2, 3, it's where the 5 is. It wants to splice these two values, so these are then added or stored in the new removed array. And it adds 4 and 5 at the position where these values were for the old array. We can use that method now for our example on the left hand side. We just have to figure out the correct values. And afterwards, as always, we want to return it. So let me add that middle deck right here. Now let me check. We have a deck of 10 cards. So our middle index position will always be the 4. So a deck of 10 cards starts from 0 and goes up to 9. So we have the 4 right in the middle. And we want to have the middle 2 cards. So we need to splice 2. Let me scroll back up. Right here once again there was the example We've also spliced two cards, the last one, 5 and 6 in this case. And this should already be it for task 3. I'll head over to task 4. And this time we want to take the first and the last card and then put them in center. So in the example it's 1. The first card, 10 is the last, and that will be put in center. And this sentence is important, we can assume that the deck has an even number of cards. Let us first store our first card. I'll create a new constant for that and use deck shift. So this is going to find and then store the first card in this new variable. For the last card we can use the pop method. We've used both of these methods in an early exercise on exorcism. So the pop takes the last card and stores it in the new variable last card. And the shift, as I've said, takes the first card and stores it in the new variable first card. We can assume that we have an even number of cards, but we don't know the exact length. So it could be 12, could also be 4. Therefore, it's a good idea to create a new constant, a new variable where we store the middle index position and this is always the deck dot length divided by 2. So as it's even we can just write it like this. And now we've got the middle index position stored in this new variable for every deck size. And now we want to actually perform this sandwich trick and we can use once again splice for that. We use our deck.splice and this time let me just directly return the new deck so I don't store it anywhere, I just store it in the deck array directly. And for the splice values once again we'll have to check. The first value is the index position so I've got that stored in the middle index right here. And then we want to add the two cards. Well, let me go back to the task so that I don't do any mistakes here. Let me check it. So it has to be the reverse order, therefore the last card will be before the first card. So I'll take the last card and after it we need the first card. So the splice will add these two cards and we're not going to splice anything right there at the middle index. But it seems I've got a typo here. 
I've forgotten something, let me check that. Yeah, obviously I haven't added the zero right here, so we don't want to get rid of any information. So we need a zero right here after the index position. You can see that on the right hand side right here for the first example. So I just forgot that. But now it should work, and it does. Let us look at maybe test 14. Oh, that's a small one. Let's go to test 15. So we've got first card 9 and last card 7. So the 7 will be added right here and after it the 9 comes. So it works. Let's go to task 5. Every card that isn't a 2 disappears. So in the example, basically we'll go through the array and find all of the 2s and these will then be stored in the new variable or the new array that we're going to return. And we can use, let me scroll up. Right here the filter method. So in this case, on the right hand, in the example, it only finds the even numbers. So a remainder of 2 equals 0, which is going to filter these even numbers and it's going to get rid of the odd numbers. So let me create a new variable, constant 2 deck, and we'll use the deck.filter and afterwards we'll return a new array. And for the filter, I can basically copy paste this from the example. Instead of value, we could also write card to make it more obvious what it is. And we don't want to have the even numbers, so not a remainder of two. We simply want to find the twos. So card strictly equals two will be filtered and then stored in a new two deck array and is then returned. So that was an easy one. You can see that here for test 16, we've got three twos and they are all filtered correctly out. Let's head over to task 6. We need to convert a shuffled deck into an order deck. So it's going to order the cards. It starts at the lowest and then goes up to the highest. And this is explained right here for the sort method. And we've got an example with an object. And we can use the structure of it almost identically. Let me use sort deck as a new array name for that. And then we use the deck, our array.sort. And within sort, we want to compare cards. So I'll name that card one, card two. Well, let me be careful so that I don't miss a parenthesis here. But that should be good. And inside we're going to nest these if conditions. First condition would be, as in the example, so if the first element is smaller than the second, in this case we've got cards as elements and not the name of the object. So if card 1 is smaller than card 2, we want to return minus 1, so that the position of the card gets adjusted by minus 1, and if card 1 is bigger than card 2, we're going to return a 1, so it's going to move to the right hand side. 
with plus one and to the left hand side in the array stacking order with minus one and if card one would equal card one we would have a return of zero and afterwards don't forget to return your new deck so I've called it sword deck but this should be fine And here in test 19, for example, it sorts it perfectly. Once again, read through this example on the right hand side, it's almost one by one the same thing. Task 7 is to reorder the deck. Let me read it carefully. Alright, so we're going to take the first card, make it the last, the second card, make it the second last, and so forth. So it's simply reversing the deck. And we've got a method for that. Let me scroll up. Here it is. It's a simple method. So all that we have to do is to take the array that's given, in this case the deck, and then use this reverse on it. And I can directly return it, and we should be good with task 7. So the final one was easy again. And this is how you can solve this Elizabeth's transformative enchantments exercise on exorcism. I hope this video was helpful, thank you for watching, and I'll see you next time.